before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. been so, so kind to me. Still your love far from me You have been so, so good to me When I felt no words, you paid it all for me You have been so, so
just searching for something Something I knew was there but couldn't see I remember the moment When the one I was searching for found me I can't make sense of it, no getting over it How much your love changed everything Oh, cause I know you now How could I go without Jesus? You're more than enough for me I don't need anything else I need your love, I need your love I don't want anything else I need your love Church Kid Show. For today's activity, we are going to need all of you to participate. Mm -hmm. We are going to play a game of Would You Rather. Listen, having courage is hard, and sometimes we have to make hard choices. So today, we're going to make some hard choices together. Are you ready? We are going to ask each other some Would You Rather questions, and then we will give you a chance to answer as well. Are you ready? Ready. So, Charles, uh, would you rather give up bathing for a month or give up any usage of internet for a month bathing mm -hmm. so you can either to to stop define showering. bathing no you okay. can't be clean at all you would smell clean. so bad and you would be so greasy and can't even use deodorant can i roll around in some or clean grass nope <laughs> that's not bathing essentially, nor does it involve essentially, water essentially you are not able to smell good for a month or can i be like Everyone, the elephants and throw dust on my back no and, nope Nope. Absorb the juices. Sick. What? What juices? <laughs> no, everyone would be like, wow, he smells so terrible and he looks so dirty for a month. I just wouldn't no see anyone then. No one would come near you. I, I would just be alone. <clears throat> no, I'm just kidding. I would probably, not because of what other people would think, yeah. but my own peace would be disrupted by my stench. So I would say give up internet. Mm. Yeah, same. Okay, church kids, if you chose um, giving up bathing for a month, we need you to stand up. Arise. Stand Mr. up. Mr. Rex absolutely stand would. Stand up. He's, he's already standing, but. Yes. Yeah. For sure. He Rex would definitely would give choose. up bathing. Yeah. He already bathes only once a month. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Rex, you're gonna go down. Yeah. Because then you'll stand for the ones Ew. that I think you agree Ew. with. <laughs> Next one, everyone sit down. If you stood up and chose that you would rather give up bathing for a month, that's. 
I'm not surprised. Would you rather fall into a pit of clipped toenails or have a nosebleed every time you sneezed? What? <laughs> so fall into a, a pit of clipped toenails once. Yeah, or you would have a nosebleed every time you sneezed. Forever? Yeah. Toenails, hands down. Other people's toenails. Once rather than every about, single time having a nosebleed. Think about like the grossest, mm -hmm. just the most disgusting fungus filled toenails. I will take a shower afterwards and bleach. Oh, you would go into a pit of toenails. Yes, and I will, sh yeah, once and then get out of there. What if it was just like a slight nosebleed? Like, oh. Every, for the rest of, of my life? <laughs> yeah. No, I don't want to nosebleed the rest of my life every time I, I sneeze all the time. Yeah. Okay, what if, if it was, a, what if, what if, what if it was a clip, a thing of clipped toenails every time you sneezed and a nosebleed, a profusive nosebleed every time you sneezed? Then which one? But I guess I would once. just do it. It's just once. Oh. All right, church kids, if you chose that you would rather fall into a pit of clipped toenails like Charles, you need to stand up right now. Mr. Rex Let's is on my side. You. He is clipped Let's toenails. Let's see you clipped toenails, people. Clipped toenails. So gross. So gross. It is it's gross, so but gross. it's once rather than the rest of my life Ew. having to deal with nosebleeds. <laughs> okay, would you rather eat a chunk, a large chunk, of nasty, unclean, lice-filled hair, or drink a glass of sweat? No, God, please, no! That's a hard one. Yeah, both equally disgusting. Does that say lice-filled hair? Yep. <laughs> ha! That's the question. I'm sticking with it. Disgusting, lice-filled hair. Have you guys ever a seen what a, a lice ball? looks like? It's thousands and hundreds of them. Yeah. I think, in theory, I would choose the hair. Yep, I'm choosing hair. Okay, if you chose that you would rather drink a glass of sweat, stand up. Rex, Let's see you. Rex, you would absolutely Let's drink sweat. You, you'll yes. choke on the hair, I'm yes. sorry. Ew, y'all are nasty if you stood up with the sweat thing because... We're both nasty. That's, both are gross. Sick. Sick, sick, sick. Okay, would you rather drink milk that smells weird or that looks weird? If like, it looks weird, does it mean that it doesn't smell weird? Yeah, but it looks, looks like chunky looks. and like maybe some moldiness. Looks. looks weird, absolutely, because if it smells weird, that means it's gone bad. Looks In weird. General. I'll eat the chunks. It's like cheese. Ew! <laughs> if you chose that you would rather drink milk that smells weird, like I chose, Stand up. Okay, everybody sit down. This is our final one. Ooh. Would you rather be in a cage with reptiles or a cage with lions? I pick lions because I'm absolutely terrified of reptiles. Little reptiles, little turtles, lizards. Is yeah. a spider a reptile? Because. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be out. Like a tarantula? Is a tarantula a reptile? It is not. Not okay. in the slightest. Okay. <laughs> I hands down choose reptile. Okay, if you chose reptiles like Charles did, stand up. Mr. Rex is Let's a reptile. See. Kind of. What? So he's definitely with reptiles. He'd probably eat the reptiles. Ew, uh, absolutely not. Okay, well, that was thrilling. Very. Yeah. As you could tell, making choices can be really hard, especially when maybe everyone else is making a different decision than you are. Answering would you rather questions is fun and easy, but in life, we are often faced with really, really big choices. Most of the time, the question comes down to, will you choose to live like Jesus or not? Having courage to speak up when you see something you know is wrong or to be kind even when it's hard are all things we have to practice every day. We will all mess up and we don't always get it right, but that doesn't mean we can't do it. Courage takes practice. Let's take a look at what game you're all playing today. This town ain't big enough for the two of us. What's up, church kids? We're about to get into a game that I like to call Water World. All right, so the point of this game is you are gonna have one squirt gun, all right? And then your opponent is gonna have one squirt gun. So that means there are two people on the stage. And then what you gotta do is you have got to shoot your squirt gun at the target right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten, 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 ten. 
10 <laughs> solo <laughs> You have 10 cups to knock down off the table, but you have to line up behind the designated line. No cheating here, because we have Sheriff, and he's in town, and he's ready to rock. Get your trigger finger ready and your water on, because we're about to get into Water World. The game begins in three, two, one. Yeah, Joshua 1 9. I said Joshua 1 9. Joshua 1 9 says, Be strong and brave. Do not be afraid. Do not lose soul. I'm the Lord your God. I'll be with you wherever you go. You go, you go, you go. Be strong and brave. Do not be afraid. Do not lose soul. I'm the Lord your God. I'll be Change my heart, no, he's not done. Facing fears, no, I won't run. Give me that strength, give me that bravery. Give me that hope that they saw savory. I know you'll be with me in the morning, in the night, in the sun, or the rain when the cold starts to bite. I can trust in your goodness, even in the pain. When life is tough, I speak your name. Jesus, hold me through the rough. I want your love, yeah, I can't get enough. When I'm weak, you make me strong, strong, stronger than they ever seen. He died so we could be long. be long. Let's give it up for the king. Come on, say, be strong and brave. Do not be afraid. Do not lose so by the Lord your God. I'll be with you wherever you go. You go, you go, you go, you go. Be strong and brave. Do not be afraid. Do not lose so by the Lord your God. I'll be with you wherever you go. You go, you go, you go, you go. Joshua 1 9. Our memory verse is, be strong and brave. Do not be afraid. Do not lose hope. I am the Lord your God. I will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1, 9. Wow, how encouraging is that verse? I don't know about you, but there are a lot of times during the day where I feel anxious or scared. And this verse is so helpful to know that even in those moments, God is with me. Exactly. Having courage doesn't mean we aren't ever scared, but it means having the faith and trust in God to move forward and keep going even when it might be hard. God will give you the courage to do what is right. All you have to do is ask for it. Let's jump into our lesson and see what we have to learn today. Help me avoid the wrong straw. Ah, hang over the loop. Four, three. I'm Jamie. Jamie? Yes, Ricky. Got a question for you about guts. Okay, what kind of guts? Uh, human guts or uh, bug guts? Courage guts. Ooh, okay. Have you ever had a moment where you had to speak up mm -hmm. because a friend was about to do something wrong? Yes, yes. I had a friend who believed something about another friend that was not true, and so I was able to speak into that and tell my friend the truth. I'm glad you spoke up. Thank you. Yeah. Me, um, someone actually spoke up for me. Um, oh. 
And when I was younger, I was actually giving out my home address uh, and I was like in the middle of it. And my younger sister was overhearing me and she's like, you shouldn't give out your personal information to other people. Oh. Um, and, sh and she's a lawyer today, so. Nice. I, I just, I'm glad she spoke up. I was, I'm glad she was there to protect you. <laughs> me too. Yeah. Sometimes to be gutsy and to help our friends, we've got to use our words. But it can be tough. I mean, mm -hmm. who are we to judge? What if we lose a friend over it? How can you find the guts to speak up for God's truth? You know what? I think it would be helpful to look at the story of Abigail. Have you ever been in the middle of a fight? That's exactly where Abigail found herself in a story from 1 Samuel in the Bible. Abigail was known for being wise and beautiful, but her husband, Nabal, was known for being a jerk. He was super rich and super rude. He lived up to his name, which literally means fool. One day, David sent some peaceful men to Nabal to ask for some supplies. David had helped keep Nabal's sheep safe from thieves. He was hoping Nabal would be generous with what he had. Instead, Nabal said, Nah, who is David? Sounds sketchy. This isn't a charity. Beat it. When his men returned empty-handed and told David what Nabal had said, he was furious. Sometimes when you're insulted, you immediately forget everything you know you should do. In this case, David told 400 of his men, grab your sword, we're gonna go kill this fool and his family. Meanwhile, someone told Abigail what her husband had said to David's men. She knew a fight was coming to her doorstep. She also knew that David and his men were about to do something they would regret. She acted quick. She loaded up four donkeys worth of food and supplies for David's men and left without telling her lazy husband. As she rode out to meet them, she thought, what could I possibly say to stop 400 guys with swords, red hot and ready to rage? When she arrived, the first thing she did was show as much respect to David as she could. She dropped to her knees and begged forgiveness for Nabal's unkindness. And then she did something you can do with your friends. She reminded him who he is. She reminded him that he's good and stopped him from an act of evil. She spoke peace where it was desperately needed. And it worked. David listened. He thanked her and blessed her. Because of Abigail, he cooled down. He respected her for saying something. Abigail had no idea what her tough conversation would cost. It could have cost her life, but that didn't stop her. She made things better because she knew better. She spoke up. What Abigail did was pretty gutsy. Jamie, you here? I'm looking at straws and I have a really bad feeling about this. Oh no. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, Mystery Hand just handed me our challenge. It sounds like trouble challenge. In front of your partner are three straws. One of them leads to goodness, oh. two are very much gross. Okay. Uh, guide your partner to the right choice, but here's the twist, you cannot use your voice. Only the noisemaker in front of you. You have one minute before they must choose. Your partner can talk. Uh, which one's the partner? You. Oh, I'm the partner. Start! Ricky, I'm looking at a blue straw. Make two noises if I should not drink it. Oh, great. Okay, I'm looking at a green straw. Make two noises if I should not drink it. Oh! I think it's green! Okay, Ricky, I'm looking at a red straw. Make two noises if I shouldn't drink it. Okay, it's the green! Okay, I'm going green! It's either root beer or, I think it might be root beer. <laughs> Yay! Winner! <laughs> okay, so it is now my turn. Jamie is going to make some noise to help. Round two. All right, Jamie, I have a red straw in front of me. Make some noise if I should drink from it. All right, great. All right, uh, make some noise if I should drink from the green straw. Make some noise if I should drink from the blue straw. Oh, that's delightful. Okay. Huh. Can't quite place it, but it's fine. 
And now, a message from our sponsor. Do you know someone who's done something wrong? Did you forget to speak up and say something to stop them? We can't go back in time. The science just isn't there yet. But we can get you the guts to speak up. We'll help you speak up for justice. Cat got your tongue? <laughs> Dog tape your mouth shut? That's not a phrase. It's time for you to speak up. If you wish you had said something, contact the law offices of Henderson and Tate. We're good with words. We can get you all kinds of words. Flabbergast! That's a word. Look it up. We've got too many cases lately. We're really busy. And we need your help. If fewer people made mistakes, we would have fewer cases. And we could eat more lunches. We need a nap. We're willing to fight for nap. We bought this commercial to ask for your help. Speak up! We'll work for you to work for us. Need the grandma to keep your grandma from the slammer? It's time for you to find your voice. Need the chatter or the patter to help an attacker know their actions matter? We'll help you. Whoa, that one got me a little lightheaded. Yeah, you oh, too. Hang on, I need to take a flight. We'll help you find the words for what you're for, not what you're against. Contact the law officers of Henderson and Tate. Get the speech to help you teach. So that we can go to the beach. It is so fun to make a new friend. When you meet someone and you're like, hey, I like this thing, do you like this thing? And they're like, I like this thing, do you like this thing? You like the same stuff, you like to go to the same places, you like to do the same things. Making a friend is amazing. The thing that's really hard about having a friend though is when you have to disagree with them. When you have to say, hey, I know that you're upset about this, but I don't think you want to say that. I don't think you want to do that. I don't think you want to make that decision. That's really hard because you don't know how they're going to react. Are they going to get really mad and then they're not going to be your friend anymore? Are they going to take it well and you're going to be glad that you said something? Like, how's it going to go? And that's what we see with the story of Abigail. Abigail knows that David is upset. So she gathers up her donkey, she gathers up the food, and she meets him out there. And she doesn't know. I mean, David's a really powerful man. What's he gonna do? Is he gonna listen to her at all? Is he gonna keep doing whatever he had planned on doing? But she knows that she has to speak up. She has to say something. So she digs up her courage, she raises her voice, and she says, you don't want to do this. There's a different way. And that's what God calls us to do. He calls us to stand up, to use the voice that he's given us, to be courageous, to dig deep, and to speak the truth. Because the hardest thing to say is I don't agree with you, but the best thing to do is speak up when you know that you should. You don't want to walk away from a situation and think, I wonder what could have happened. I wonder what would have been different. Should I have said something different? Should I have done something different? Speak up, use your voice, be courageous. Speak what God is telling you to say. Okay, next round, but we only have 30 seconds to guess this time. So I'm nervous. <laughs> My armpits are sweating. Start. Okay, Ricky, make a lot of noise if I should drink the drink out of the yellow thing. It's on my left. Oh, he didn't make any noise. All right, let's see if it's gonna work. Okay, uh, make a lot of noise if I should drink out of the purple thing. He didn't make any noise. Uh, the teal thing. Make a lot of noise. Okay, he didn't, okay, that didn't work. Um, Ricky, uh, don't make any noise if I should drink out of the left. Uh. Don't make any noise, I and mean, he made a noise. Oh gosh, that's very twisty. Okay, I'm gonna try it. Mm. That's not good. I don't know what that is, but I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> It tasted like watered down ocean water. <laughs> Did you just mess up? Ricky? Oh, I just burped up some string cheese water. Uh, what do you have over there? I barely even heard it. Oh. Oh, you're honking, sorry. I accept your apology and I'm gonna come breathe my string cheese water breath on you. I can smell it over here. 
Okay, so it's my turn again, and uh, this is increasingly getting more stressful. <laughs> All right, uh, I think I'm ready though. Final round. All right, Jamie, um, can I drink from the left? Oh no. Jamie, can I drink from the middle? I can. Wait, can I? Okay. Okay, Jamie, can I drink from the right? All right, I'm gonna go for the middle. Oh my goodness. Oh no. Is that an approving noise or not? That's not clarity! It was a warning shake. It was a not good shake. Oh, that was spicy and, and regrettable. Oh, I should have drank from the one on the left. I'll try the left one because Jamie didn't make any noise. Oh no. I'm not doing that. One on the right. I shouldn't have drinking anything? I'm gonna drink from the left. <laughs> oh, no! It's pickle gas! Jimmy! Jimmy! You can't move the noise! This has to be the good one. This, ha if it's not, I'm, go I'm, oh. Oh, uh, wow. My goodness. Oh, that was bad. That was pickle juice. And whatever liquid pain is. And it's all over, just like that. Big stuff. Tiny book. Let's talk about how to have a tough conversation. I feel like I need to say something. If you've ever felt like you needed to speak up, this tiny book is for you. Sometimes it's feedback, sometimes it's a confrontation, sometimes it's, hey, you've got something in your teeth. There will be times when you need to be bold and kindly speak up when you're genuinely concerned for someone. It's important to remember, the goal is not to be right. The goal is restoration. It's reminding someone of who God made them to be, helping others see something they might not be able to see for themselves. Everybody has blind spots. Through tough conversations, we can share grace and truth to help become the people God made us to be. Where do you start? Before you talk to others, talk to God. Is God guiding you to say something? With the right heart, a heart guided by God, you'll have the right motivation. The right heart will help you stay away from acting superior, shouting people down, or losing control of your emotions because you don't want that. Jesus tells us to love others as we love ourselves. So ask yourself, how would I want someone to talk to me about something tough? How would you challenge yourself to something better? And think, what would make your defensive walls go up what would bring the walls down? Before you confront someone, confront yourself first. And once you're ready, here are some tips to help your tough conversation be a little less tough. Right heart, right time, right place. Do the prep work. Ask God to not only help you plan the right words, but also the right timing and location. Clarity helps. Be clear in what you're calling out and focus on what's important, not the minor stuff. Gentle on correction, firm on compassion. As you balance grace and truth, call people to something higher with kindness. Remember who you represent, Jesus. Here's the truth. Not everyone will listen to what you have to say. People might get defensive or defiant. That's a natural response. It doesn't mean get louder. It means you keep praying and keep blessing. Say what you need to say and trust God with the rest. When we speak the truth, we can be bold. We can lead others with love and mercy just like God leads us. What does courage cost? A big, bold voice speaking up at the right time. We trade what is easy for what might be hard to say. When you speak God's truth, your words serve your friends well. As we speak up, we reflect God.
explain yourself. What? Okay, so here's what happened. So mine said, don't drink from the one in the middle and don't drink from the yellow one. So the only thing oh. you said was, should I drink from the right one? Yeah. So I wasn't sure. And then you said, D- you know, should I drink from the middle one? And I was like, no, don't drink from the middle one. Is that why you made just such hesitant sounds of like, oh. Yes, there were some hesitant sounds because I needed more information. And so then whenever I made noises for all of them, that was me saying, I need more information. I see. Yes. I see. <laughs> well, thank you for attempting to help. Yeah, yeah, I tried my best. Maybe you need to <laughs> make some noise. If you see somebody that's about to make a bad choice that will hurt them or the character, then speak up. Yeah, it takes guts to use your voice like Abigail, but sometimes a gutsy voice is what's needed most. <gasps> I'm ready to be courageous. Bring on any straw. Bring on this straw. Drink the whole thing. Ricky. Hmm? Aren't you going to say, you know, wait, stop, don't do something unwise. Uh, Yeah, yeah, Jamie, stop. Don't do something unwise. Ah, very good. And scene. Stand up for God's truth this week, Loopsters. And until next time, enjoy enjoy the ride. ride! Now that you've learned the ABCs, we want to give you the opportunity to invite Jesus into your heart. When you say yes to Jesus, you are putting him first, making him the leader and Lord of your life. Are you ready? As a sign of support, let's all say this prayer together. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, welcome to my world. I ask you to come into my heart and to forgive me of all my sins. I decide today to follow you and to make you the leader and Lord of my life. I believe it, I receive it, and I will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we are so excited for you. Make sure to tell your Connect Group leader so we can celebrate with you and give you next steps. Remember, church kids, our faith declaration is, I am strong and brave. Don't forget that God is always with you, even when you have to make hard choices, even when you have to do what is right, and maybe your friends don't like you for it. God is with you. Have courage this week to live like Jesus. And don't forget, it's a great day to be a church, church kid! kid! Yeah! 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 Yeah